In this video, we will continue exploring design scenarios and combination wizards. In our last video, we covered the definition of all load cases for our structural model. Now we will delve into the remaining tabs of the load cases and combinations dialog box. We will begin under the actions tab. As usual, all actions are summarized in the list on the left. It's important to note that actions are independent of each other when they originate from different sources and the correlation between them can be disregarded concerning the structural system's reliability. According to this concept, you need to define actions to which load cases are assigned for automatic superposition. The defined action categories serve as the foundation for classifying the load cases. The main tab manages the criteria for classifying and superimposing load cases. Here you will see all the action categories that we used when creating the load cases. An action category encompasses all associated load cases. In this tab, you can also select whether these cases should act simultaneously or excluded from each other. Moving on, the design situations tab. This lists the automatically generated design situations. For instance, the AAC 7 mandates the design of the strength limit state and serviceability limit state, LRFD and ASD, each subject to specific combination rules. These limit state rules can be analyzed within design situations. The active checkbox controls whether design cases selected in the list are analyzed during the calculation. This allows us to exclude design situations that aren't relevant to the model, thereby limiting the number of results. This tab also lists the add-ons that you have activated in the base data at the beginning. The checkbox enables you to activate the desired design situations for the respective add-ons. Under options, we select geometrically linear analysis from the list for both design situations. This ensures that all load combinations are automatically created and calculated according to the geometrically linear analysis. By default, the design situations are set to a second order analysis. In the actions combination tab, actions are combined according to the criteria described in the standard. Action combinations encompass all options for accounting for the load cases contained within the action. These options depend on the action category and the combination expressions. RFM automatically assigns short descriptions based on the safety factors and symbols of the actions, expressing combination rules. You can modify these descriptions as needed. In the last tab, load combinations, the loads from individual load cases are superimposed and calculated together as a single large load case. This calculation accounts for partial safety factors, combination factors, and consequence classes. Load combinations can be calculated according to the geometrically linear, second order, or large deformation analysis. By default, load combinations are set to a second order analysis. The list in the last two tabs are automatically populated by RFM depending on the selected standard. If you prefer to have control over this, you can deactivate the combination wizard in the base tab. There is also this option, combination names according to the action category. This option is typically turned on by default and will rename the load cases used in the combinations according to the action category. Now you have learned how to create load cases, set sections, and manage design situations. Additionally, you've gained insight into the automatic formation of load and action combinations. In our next video, we will apply the loads to our steel hull. Until then, stay tuned.